Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing uh, the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. So we've now discussed the form of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor which we find in skeletal muscle cells, the alpha-1-2, beta-1, delta, epsilon form, or the alpha-1-2, beta-1, delta, gamma form in fetal skeletal muscle cells. We've then discussed the form that you find in ganglionic uh, neurons, so we've discussed the alpha alpha-3-2, beta-4-3 uh, heteropentamer, and finally we've just discussed a brain form, namely the alpha-7-5 homopentamer, uh, which has these five acetylcholine binding sites and is antagonized by alpha-bungarotoxin and also methylic conatine. Right, so now what I want to talk about is another form of this um, receptor that is within uh, neurons in the brain, okay? And this is the alpha-4-2, okay, alpha-4-2, and then beta-2-3 isoform. And this is the other major isoform that is in the brain. So you will have more uh, types of nicotinic acetylcholine receptors than these five that we've been through. Uh, but these are the main ones. These are the ones that are really physiologically important. So these are the ones that if you're going to learn about a few, these are the ones you should learn. Okay, right. So let's see the structure again, the cartwheel structure here. So again, we are looking from the extracellular aspect or at this nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. So here is the pore in the middle. Okay. And here are the five subunits. Uh, which make up this nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. So, it's very similar uh, to um, the ganglionic form of the receptor, the alpha-3 to beta-4-3 uh, composition. So basically, you put the alpha-4 subunit here, okay, and another alpha-4 subunit, uh, how should this be, here. Okay, I'm just making sure that, again, uh, that I can draw the binding sites. And then you put the beta-2 subunits here, here, and here. So that's how we get uh, two alpha-4 subunits and three beta-2 subunits. And again, the alpha-4 subunit is going to function as uh, the um, domain which provides uh, the ABC loops, i.e. the principal subunit, okay? And the beta-2 subunits are going to act as the complementary subunits. So they're going to provide the D, E, and F motifs. Okay, so these here, these two, this beta 4 and this beta 4 here is going to provide the uh, D, E, and F motif for these beta pleated sheets. And again, you're only going to have two ligand binding domains on these uh, alpha 4, 2, beta 2, 3 uh, subunits. Sorry, these are alpha-4, 2, beta-2, 3 nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. So, this alpha-4 subunit, it will have the A, B, and C loops here. So here's the A, the B, and the C loop. Then this beta-2 subunit here, this will then have the D, E, and F loops. So here's D, here's E, this is F. And then alpha-4 will then have the A, B, and the C bound to it. Uh, so the, it will have the A, B, and the C loops. So here's A, B, C. And then again, this beta 2 here will have the D, E, and F beta pleated sheets, although we call them uh, loops still. Okay, so let me colour this in. So overall, um, what you have is two acetylcholine binding sites, which are again, whoops, in uh, the gap between two neighboring protein subunits. So between the gap, uh, well, between the, um, between the alpha-4 and the beta-2 subunit, okay? You have the acetylcholine binding domain, okay? And uh, when acetylcholine binds to these binding sites, what's going to happen is it's going to cause uh, the, a change in conformation in the receptor, and that will cause the opening of the pore so that sodium ions can then move through the pore and go into the cytoplasm of the cell, causing depolarization of the electrical potential difference across the membrane of the cell. Okay, so we have the beta-2 
uh, subunits in blue and the alpha-4 subunits in red. Okay, and this is a heteropentaretma again because uh, you've used different uh, subunits to make up uh, the five-membered receptor. Okay, so now let's have a look at the pharmacology of this alpha-4-2, beta-2-3 uh, receptor. So basically, its agonists are acetylcholine, and it is agonized by nicotine. So acetylcholine will bind to these binding sites here and open the receptor, and also so will nicotine. However, we think the alpha-7-5 homopentamer is more important in the addictive properties of nicotine than the alpha-4-2, beta-2-3 uh, form. Okay, and then an antagonist, this um, form of the receptor is not sensitive to alpha bungarotoxin, so it's like the ganglionic form in that sense. It will not be, it will not have its binding site blocked by alpha bungarotoxin, but it is still sensitive to this compound methylica aconitine. Like aconitine, I think that must be how you pronounce it. Like aconitine, uh, so methyl like aconitine. It is. Uh, will have its binding site blocked by methyl like aconitine. Okay, right. So we've now seen these five different forms of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, which have different protein subunit compositions. Okay, and are found in different locations within the body.